Welcome to the Crazy Head Chemist. So another video in bonding and molecular structure. Bam! Today we're doing the resonant structures of sulfur dioxide. Okay, we're going to do a Lewis dot structure for sulfur dioxide. There's the formula for sulfur dioxide. We have actually already done the Lewis structure of sulfur dioxide before. Okay, so you should be familiar with this one. Okay, this is one of the Lewis dot structures for sulfur dioxide. Now, can you draw another one? That's the question. So what we're going to do is we're going to move that double bond to the other side. That double bond moving it to the other side lets us know that, hey, this has a resonance structure. Now, are these equivalent resonance structures or not? So we, these are equivalent resonance structures and we don't actually need to write out the formal charge on here. So I'm going to let you know about a couple other things here. Number one, these both have an AX2E structure as before, right? Now, when you have any resonance structure, the geometry, the bond angle, the polarity is going to be all the same for each and every one of them. Okay, so it's an AX2E, that is two bonding, one non-bonding. This is bent or angular, that means it has less than, less than 109.5 degrees, probably more in the range of about 105 degrees. Okay, this molecule is polar because it's asymmetrical. I want you to notice something else on this here, and that is sulfur dioxide does not have brackets around the uh, Lewis dot structures, unlike the acetate ion on the previous video. That is because sulfur dioxide does not have a charge, therefore you don't need the brackets. Okay, now I'm going to do something else here, and that is determine the bond order. So the bond order is the number of bonds divided by the number of bonding regions. Okay, so you can take any resonance structure of the two and look at the central element. Now, how many bonds do you see around the sulfur, the central element? I see a single bond and a double bond, but that double bond is composed of two types of bonds, a sigma and a pi. So, let's count up the total number of bonds around each sulfur. Okay, so around one of the sulfurs is one single bond, a sigma bond for the double bond, and a pi bond for the double bond. So that's a total of three bonds. That lone pair of electrons on the central atom of the sulfur does not count for a bond order determination. And then how many regions around the uh, central element are there? That means how many bonding regions are there? There's one, two bonding regions. So it's going to be three bonds in two regions of bonding regions, and that gives us a bond order of three halves. So this comes up to another point here with resonance structures. Resonance structures is a hybrid of the two, so it's a superimposition of these two structures is actually the best structure for sulfur dioxide. So sulfur dioxide does not have a single bond in it. Sulfur dioxide does not have a double bond in it. In fact, that bond order of three halves lets you know that each bond is 1.5. That is one and a half bond order, if you will. So there are no double bonds. There are no single bonds in sulfur dioxide. Each of those are equivalent bonds of 1.5 each. Okay, so that's why it's really a superimposition of the two. It's more like, remember when we talked about the introduction of resonance structures, it's not yellow, it's not blue, it's actually green. So it's a fusion between the two. So if we were to properly write this, okay, we would have a bond and a half, but we can't write a line to represent a bond and a half. That's why we write resonance structures, okay? All right, hopefully that made sense for you. I am the Crazy Head Chemist, and I hope you get into the holiday spirit. Give me a thumbs up if you like that video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Pass on my YouTube channel to all your friends, your relatives, your co-workers, your parents, your grandparents. Spread it to everybody. Talk to you later. Bye now.